Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our lesson on borrowing cost. And then we are going to begin by looking at the borrowing costs that are eligible for capitalization. And then we will move on to the specific funds and the general funds. Solve examples and I'm sure that we will be fine after today's lesson. Okay, so before we look at the specific funds and the general funds, we want to ask this question, what are borrowing costs that are eligible for capitalization? We have already spoken about the qualifying asset, and we said that the qualifying asset is an asset which takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. Now, borrowing costs that are eligible for capitalization are those borrowing costs which could have been avoided if that expenditure on the qualifying asset was not incurred. Okay, so those borrowing costs, which is avoidable by avoiding the construction of the qualifying asset, becomes borrowing costs that is eligible for capitalization. Now, our main focus for today is on the funding. Okay, we have specific funds and then we have general funds for constructing a qualifying asset. And I'm going to explain them. Now, when we say specific funds, specific funds are funds that are acquired purposely for the construction of the qualifying assets. In other words, we mentioned that particular construction in the borrowing. So it means that it was that construction that drove the business or the company to go and borrow that particular fund for the construction of the qualifying asset. In other words, if the construction is not done, or if the construction proposal is not agreed upon, those loans or funds will not be borrowed or secured. That is the meaning. So we call them specific funds when they are secured specifically for the construction of a qualifying asset. When we come to the general funds or general borrowings, general borrowings has to do with the already existing pool of funds that is in the capital structure of the business or the company. For example, you know, most businesses have debts in their capital structure. So there is equity component there is, and there is debt component in the capital structure. The already borrowings that are existing, it could be one source, two sources, or three sources of different funds. We borrowed from the bank, we, we have bonds, we have debentures. All those ones are already in there as general funds, general borrowing. And let's assume that we, we secured those loans at a time where we didn't have the idea of constructing a qualifying asset. But those funds are already there. The aim is to use it as a means of financing business operations. Then along the line, the business had the idea to construct a qualifying asset. Now, instead of going for specific funds to um, finance the construction of the qualifying asset, they may decide that, oh, we already have some outstanding uh, funds in our capital structure. That is the loans that we have already taken. So there is no need to maybe go in for additional funds. So those ones are general borrowings. They were not secured for the purpose of constructing a qualifying asset, but they are already there. And we have decided to use a part to construct the qualifying asset. So when that happens, we are going to take a portion of that money to construct. Now, that portion that has been taken from the general borrowing to construct a qualifying asset, borrowing costs that are related to that portion alone would be eligible for capitalization. That is the meaning. And the other parts that we didn't use will continue to be general borrowings and the interest expense and other borrowing costs that are connected with that will be expensed because those ones are not eligible for capitalization. So we are saying that the portion of the general borrowing that we are going to use to construct a qualifying asset will attract, uh, th there is an interest uh, portion or there is borrowing costs attached to those, por uh, those funds that we use. And the borrowing costs that are attached to the parts that we are using to construct a qualifying asset will be eligible for capitalization. So that is what we are saying. Now, one more thing that you should understand. So that is the difference between specific and the general borrowing. Now, whether specific or general borrowing, there could be multi-source borrowings, okay? 
Now, it could be, even in the case of the specific funds, it could be that we wanted to borrow $13,000 for the construction of a qualifying asset. But we couldn't secure all from one source. And so what we did was that we went to APSA Bank and then we secured 5000 And then we issued bonds. Okay. Bonds and the bonds was able to raise 3000 And then the extra 5000 was um, secured from, let's say, Standard Bank. So Standard Chartered Bank also lent us 5000 Now, this could be the breakdown of this 13000 that we have gone to borrow, specifically for the construction of a qualifying asset. Now, what the challenge this can throw to the business is that they may come in at different interest rates and they may carry different ancillary costs and other borrowing costs. Okay, so what we are going to do is that let's assume that in this case it's just the interest rate. So let's say there is 10% interest per annum on the loan from APSA, the bonds carry 15% interest per annum and the loan from standard carries 17 percent interest so when this happens you will see that there is not one interest rate for the thirteen thousand that we are going to use so we are using a total amount of thirteen thousand for the construction of a qualifying asset but this thirteen thousand does not carry the same rate of interest or a fixed rate there is a variation in the rate of interest because of the different sources of borrowing and so what we are going to do is that we have to find an average of this rate and apply it on the thirteen thousand that is being used so we are not going to do this separate no we are going to find an average of these three rates and then apply on the thirteen thousand an average that we are going to find must not be a simple average it must be a weighted average so we are not just going to add this three and divide by three no we are going to multiply by the weight these values are the weights of the loan so we multiply the interest by the width and then when we are done we divide by the total amount and we are going to have a weighted average interest rate which we are going to apply on the 13,000 to calculate our borrowing costs that is the meaning in the same way when it's about the general borrowings we we have already said that the money was already there in the business so assuming that that money that was already there also we also definitely it will come with a rate of interest once it's a loan or a borrowing but if they are also from different sources then we are going to treat them the same way especially when the money is taken from the general pool of funds and the general pool of funds contain about five different sources of loan with five different interest rates we have to look for the weighted average interest rate and apply on the portion that is going to be used for constructing the qualifying assets okay now let me add this also very important thing now after finding the borrowing cost okay let us assume that we went specifically for this amount of money but the construction of the qualifying assets will take let's say five years to complete using this thirteen thousand dollars and then in the first two years we realize that in the first two years we will need only three thousand to complete but the extra ten thousand will come in in the subsequent years okay so instead of allowing the cash to lie idle we decided to invest the idle cash of ten thousand and so we can decide to invest idle cash out of the money that we have secured for constructing the qualifying assets we will decide to invest the idle cash of let's say ten thousand and the idle cash that we invest will bring in investment income so at the end of the two years let's assume that we got investment income return of let's say one thousand five hundred dollars as your investment income now what we are going to do the general principle is what i'm explaining and then we'll pick a question and then we'll solve together the general principle is that when you get investment income you reduce your borrowing cost by the investment income from the investment of idle cash and so when we apply the weighted average interest rate on on the amount that is needed to construct a qualifying asset and we get a rate let's say we have let's say 
5,000, sorry, as interest. Now, we have to reduce that $5,000 by the 1,005 so that we are going to get 3,005 and that will be the borrowing cost to be capitalized. So what we are trying to say is that when investment income comes in, then we have to reduce the total borrowing cost by the investment income. But mind you, I said this is income for two years. So if you are asked to calculate for the borrowing cost for one year, you need to amortize this investment income. It will come in like a discount on the, just like we, we look at amortization of discounts and premium. This comes in like a discount to the borrowing cost. That is the meaning. So we have to reduce the borrowing cost by any investment income thereby. And then also, let me also add this. There are times that you go for the loan. You know that you need $13,000 to construct a qualifying asset. But you can decide to take more than $13,000. So let's say you take $15,000. Even though $13,000 is what you need for constructing the qualifying asset. That, that means that you have taken $2,000 extra. And the $2,000 extra may be used for working capital purposes. When that happens, the extra $2,000 that you are going to use for working capital, because it was not used in constructing the qualifying asset, borrowing costs relating to that extra $2,000 will not be capitalized. So even though we took $5,000, we are using $13,000. Hey, sorry. So even though we took $15,000, we are using $13,000 for the construction. The extra $2,000 will not be capitalize the borrowing cost related to that so we will still have to apply the rate on only the 13,000 even though we took 15,000 that could be a trick in the exam so you have to really watch out for that okay and so without wasting my time we are going to take a question on specific funds first solve that and afterwards we'll take a question on general borrowing and then we'll solve okay A socially responsible multinational corporation, Adam Limited, decided to construct a tunnel that will link two sides of the village that were separated by a natural disaster years ago. Realizing its role as a good corporate citizen, the Adam Limited has been in the village for a couple of years exploring oil and gas in the nearby offshore area. The tunnel would take two years to build, and the total capital outlay needed for the construction would, would be not less than $20 million. To allow itself a margin of safety, the Adam Limited borrowed $22 million from three sources and used the extra $2 million for its working capital purposes. Financing was arranged in this way. So these were the arrangements. We have bank term loans, $5 million at 7% per annum. Institutional borrowings, $7 million at 8% per annum. Corporate bonds, $10 million at 9% per annum. In the first phase of the construction of the tunnel, there were idle funds of $10 million which the Adam Limited invested for a period of six months. Income from this investment was $500,000 required. Under IAS 23, how would it treat the borrowing cost? How would it capitalize the borrowing cost? And what would it do with the investment income? Okay. All right, so this is the question that we are going to solve together so looking at what we said we want to look at how we we'll treat the borrowing cost but before that we need to know how to calculate the borrowing cost now we are told that the cost of the qualifying assets this is a qualifying asset because it's going to take two years to complete and we are also told that the cost that is needed for the construction is 20 million dollars but we borrowed a total of 22 million it means that the extra 2 million is for working capital purposes and the cost the borrowing cost associated with that with that will not be capitalized but let us first of all find the weighted average cost 
of the borrowing. So, because we are told that we have bank term loans, 5 million at 7%. Institutional borrowings is coming in at 7 million at 8%. Corporate bonds, 10 million at 9%. So, each of these fund is, funds is coming in with a different rate of interest. And like I taught you earlier, we are going to find the weighted average rate. So, weighted average rate is going to be the five million dollars times seven percent plus the next one is seven million dollars times eight percent plus ten million dollars times nine percent all over the total amount which is 22 million so that is seven plus a five plus seven million plus ten million so that will be 22 million and so what is going to be the weighted average cost of capital that is going to be 8.22 percent this is going to be the answer so now we have used the weight of the fund against the percentages to find a weighted average rate that we are going to use to calculate our borrowing cost on the qualifying assets. Okay. So now that we know the interest rate, listen, we are looking at borrowing costs, and I have taught you already that there are five components of borrowing cost. But in this case, the only component present is the interest. The other components are not there, with the exception of maybe the investment income, which will come in like a discount okay so we are going to calculate the borrowing cost which is made up specifically for the interest and then we are going to reduce it by the investment income and so borrowing cost for the two-year period we are looking at it for the entire two year because we are not told the borrowing cost for a specific year we are calculating borrowing cost and so total borrowing cost will be calculated this way we have the interest portion, which is 20 million times the rate of 8.22%. Now, the borrowing is 22 million, but I'm using 20 million because that is what we are going to use to construct the qualifying asset. Okay, so this is going to be the interest calculation. Okay, but after getting this interest, you multiply by the two years and that is going to give us a total of three million two hundred and eighty eight thousand this is what we are going to get as the interest for the two years for the entire two year duration and then you know that this rate is per annum that is why I multiplied it by two because we are looking for the borrowing cost for the entire period and then we reduce it by the investment income because we are told that we in, we invested idle cash and the investment in income yielded $500,000. So we take that out and our total borrowing cost is going to be $2,788,000. So that is it for the borrowing cost calculation. We are done, but you may have to write some English or something to support because we, uh, the requirement is that under IES 23, how would you treat borrowing costs? So you have to answer that question. That how will you treat borrowing costs? So after calculating, you tell how you treat it. That you are going to capitalize it as part of the cost of the asset. And then we also ask, how would it capitalize borrowing costs? Okay. So, and what will, do, what will it do with the investment income? So the investment income, this is what we will do with it. We have, you write that you will subtract the investment income from the interest to arrive at your borrowing cost that is all it's about and this is the solution for the question but like i told you most of the standard questions it will not the the marking schemes are not satisfied with just the calculation you need to write something to explain what you have done at least something like an advice because most of the questions come in an advice format but we are actually done with this question on the specific funds I'm sure you are okay. So the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to take another question. But this time the question will be on the general borrowings. And then we'll look at how to calculate borrowing costs in a situation where there is general borrowing. 
Okay. Okay, so let us take this question together on general borrowing. ABC Limited had the following loan liability in place during 2011. So we have this loan liability. Ah, they had 2 million Ghana cities at 20% per annum. They had 6 million Ghana cities as 24% per annum. So these are the funds that are already there in their capital structure. Okay. So and then with their corresponding interest rates. Then we continue. The company installed a new bottling plant costing 1.8 million Ghana cities in 2021. Costing 1.8 million Ghana cities in 2021. The project of which was financed from the pool of loan funds. Okay. The project commenced in the first week of January 2021 and was completed on 30th September 2021. The plant was commissioned to be put on use on 1st November 2021. Required. How much borrowing cost can be capitalized as part of the cost of the bottling line? So, this is a specific question. How much borrowing cost? So, it's just a question of calculation. This is not like the other question where you have to write some English plenty and all that. Here, you have to just calculate for them how much. We are interested in the amount. How much borrowing cost can be capitalized as part of the cost of the bottling plant? So this is a qualifying asset. Well, it looks funny. It's less than a year, but it, it takes a substantial period to complete this. And let me tell you this. Before you argue with the years, okay, before you argue with the number of time that it takes and to argue whether it's a qualifying asset or not, the question itself has agreed that this is a qualifying asset. They are saying that how much borrowing cost can be capitalized. It means that it can be capitalized. So the asset is a qualifying asset. So we are going to calculate borrowing cost to be capitalized. Now, this is the analysis that we need to do first. We already had a pool of fund. We had 2 million Ghana cities with an interest rate of 20%. And then we also had 6 million Ghana cities with an interest rate of 24% per annum. This is what we already had in our capital structure. Then we want to construct the bottling plant, but we realize that there is no need for, to go in for any specific funds for that. We already had some general borrowings there, so we can use a part. But the bottling plant is going to cost us 1.8 million Ghana cities to construct that qualifying asset. Now, this is where the question comes. We have this amount of money in place already. A total of 8 million, but coming in at different interest rates. Then we need 1.8 million to construct a qualifying asset. You see, the trick here is that if you are not careful, you may be tempted to say that, oh, we took it from 2 million. So we will apply 20%. No. Once it is a pool, the question call it a pool of funds. General borrowing is usually a pool of funds. What is the meaning of a pool? It's like going to three different rivers. River Dinsu to bring in a bucket of water. River Ancobra bring in a bucket of water. Go to the sea to bring in another bucket of water. Make, put them in your pool in the house, swimming pool. So when, the moment you put those three different sources in the pool, it becomes a pool. The water mixes up. You cannot now scoop some out and say this part of the water is from Ancobra or this is from the sea. Or the, you cannot do that separation. That is how the funding of general borrowing also works. Once we have these two, it has mixed up. Forget about the interest rates that is coming in. It is mixed up. So it means we have 8 million. So if you are taking out 1.8 million, you cannot tell that this 1.8 million, you took it from the 2 million or you took it from the 6 million side. No, you cannot. What you need to understand is that it is from them. So it could be that part is from 20, part is from 24, we don't know. So it means that it comes with the same idea that we need to find a weighted average interest rate for the two funds and then use that new rate to apply on the 1.8. That is what we are going to do. And that amount we have will be the borrowing funds that are eligible for capitalization in the year of assessment. Okay. And so, let us begin with the weighted average cost of capital. 
or weighted average rate. So weighted average interest rate is going to be your 2 million Ghana cities times the 20% plus 6 million Ghana cities times 24%. All over these two, the eight million Ghana cities, and it's going to give us an interest rate of 23 percent. So, this is now the interest rate. Now, we are going to now find the borrowing cost on the 1.8 million, and this is the only one, it's only the interest that we have, there is no other component. Of borrowing cost so just the interest becomes a borrowing cost so borrowing costs to be capitalized is going to be the interest component of 23 percent of 1.8 million Ghana cities this should be the borrowing cost for the year okay but let us look back at something in the question. We are told that the project commenced in the first week of January and was completed on 30th September 2021. So it means that it took nine months to construct the qualifying asset. After September, there was no more construction. It means it was ready for use after nine months. Okay, and we are saying that the qualifying asset it's an asset that takes a substantial period of time to make it ready for use. So what we are going to do is that we need to apply the months. It took nine months to construct in the year. Sorry. In the year, it took us nine months. And so interest will be calculated as 23% on the cost times 9 over 12. And that is going to give us the borrowing cost to be capitalized for 2021 financial year which is going to be 3.310,500 Ghana cities. Yeah, so that is it for the borrowing. So this is the borrowing cost to be capitalized for 2021 financial year, and then you are done. So the general borrowing calculations is just like that of the specific funds. Just that this one, the only difference is that we didn't go for the money specifically to construct the assets. Okay. All right. So this brings us to the end of part three of our study on borrowing cost. We are going to look at the final part where we are going to consider the commencement provisions, the suspension provisions, and then the cessation provisions, as well as the disclosures. Okay. And then we may take a question that will examine or a question that will test our understanding on the commencement provisions and the other ones. Remember to subscribe to this channel if this is your first time. Share this video. Let others also have a benefit. We are growing together and we are being successful together. Until we meet again for the part four, it is bye for now.